when two people have the AS genotype, what is the chance that any children they have together might develop sickle cell disease? This is the question that we're going to be tackling in today's video on sickle cell disease. And make sure you stick around to the end. I am sharing my free checklist for people with AS genotype on the things that you need to know when you're considering having children with somebody else who has an AS genotype. Let's get started. Hey now. Take a step outside and seize the day now. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Sylvia and this is Ask Away Health, where we provide clarity and direction on everything medical. I'm a general practitioner and have a wealth of experience dealing with people who have the AS genotype as well as those who suffer from sickle cell disease. Before we go into the video, I just want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and when you do, don't forget to click the notification bell so that every time we publish a new video, once a week on Saturdays, you will know about it. The chance issue in sickle cell disease is a common question and in this video we want to break down what actually happens and the exact numbers that people should be aware in terms of the risks when two AS genotype um, people decide to get into a relationship, get married and have children together. Now sickle cell disease is a condition that affects the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that's carried on red blood cells which is primarily responsible for how we all have oxygen circulating through our bodies. Sickle cell disease is not from an infection, it's not because of a vaccination and it's not because of a curse. It has been clearly proven to be a genetic condition. So this means that an individual can only ever get sickle cell disease because they have inherited two abnormal genes from both parents. What are genes? Very simply, they carry material, DNA, which determines what you and I become. In everyone, they occur in our cells in pairs, in twos. Now, these genes are carried on chromosomes, and in all of us, we have mainly two types of chromosomes, sex chromosomes and non-sex chromosomes. Your sex chromosome determines the sex that you become, and the non-sex chromosome determines everything else about you. Now the gene of concern in the sickle cell disease is the hemoglobin S gene and it is carried on non-sex chromosomes. Now sickle cell disease is a type of genetic condition that is called an inherited autosomal recessive condition. So this tells us two things. It is carried by the non-sex chromosomes and therefore it doesn't have anything to do with an individual's sex. And the term recessive means that an individual needs to have two copies of that particular gene in themselves to be able to have the disease or what scientists call express the disease. Therefore, the person who has sickle cell disease has inherited one abnormal gene copy from their mother and one abnormal gene copy from their father and both are what contribute to the, to the person, to the individual having sickle cell disease. And so having two abnormal SS genes is what makes that particular individual have the condition sickle cell disease. Okay, very briefly, what exactly is the problem in sickle cell disease? We'll go into that in detail in another video, but briefly, having two abnormal SS genes means that this person forms an abnormal type of hemoglobin. Remember the protein that we talked about in the beginning that is responsible for us having oxygen supplied around our body and therefore crucial to our existence. So this abnormal hemoglobin changes the shape of the red blood cell, causing the sickle cell, which is where the condition derives its name. Now, sickle red cells cannot carry oxygen normally. So this leads to the different illnesses and the different problems, for example, crises that an individual with sickle cell disease will develop. Now, when it comes to um, blood conditions, don't forget that there are different genotypes. We're limiting ourselves to the specific AA, AS and SS genes that will help us to answer the question at hand. But there are other conditions, for example, thalassemia, that are also inherited blood conditions, not within the scope of today's video. So what does AA mean? 
The person with the AA genotype is just a description for the person who has the normal type hemoglobin. So that's the person with, with hemoglobin A and they are referred to as having the AA genotype. In this individual, both the gene copies that they have for um, hemoglobin are free of any abnormality or mutation. Next, what does the AS genotype mean? Now, this particular individual is also known as a carrier or a person who has a trait of sickle cell disease. It means that they do not actually suffer from the illnesses associated with sickle cell disease. And what they have in terms of their gene pairs is they have one normal gene copy from one parent and then their second gene copy is the abnormal or mutated S gene. So remember, the individual with the AS genotype would usually show no signs of illness or any problems related to sickle cell disease, but they are carrying one abnormal copy or one mutated gene copy for sickle cell disease. And what about the person with the SS genotype? So this individual has inherited from each parent one abnormal or mutated gene. So that pair contributes towards the SS and this is the person who will express or have the condition sickle cell disease and therefore will be subject to the different illness conditions, um, crises and other problems like sickle cell anemia that will occur and sometimes death associated with this condition. Okay, let's look at the question of inheritance or chance. In a situation where a couple have sickle cell disease, so the parents, mom and dad, both have sickle cell disease, this means that each of them has the hemoglobin SS. What they're going to pass on to their children, whichever children they have, they can only pass on the mutated copies. Because they have the HBSS gene, they do not have normal gene copies. But now let's address the question for this video. The people who have the AS genotype and who, as you remember, are also those who are um, called carriers or those who have the sickle cell trait. Each of these parents or potential parents has one normal gene copy for the hemoglobin and they also have one abnormal gene copy for hemoglobin. And so that means that when you're looking at the question of transmitting to their children, each of these parents could either pass one abnormal gene or one normal gene to that particular, in that particular pregnancy. And so for this couple, there are three possible outcomes each time they get pregnant. In the first scenario, each of these parents transmits the abnormal S gene to the child. The risk of that happening is 25%. And because the child has the two abnormal gene copies, they will have sickle cell disease. In other words, the risk for a couple who are both AS genotype of having a child with sickle cell disease is considered to be a 25% chance in every pregnancy. What about the second scenario? The second scenario is that on the other hand, each of these parents may transfer their normal, normal genes to that particular pregnancy or to the child in that particular pregnancy. And the risk of that happening is 25%. So what we're saying is that for that couple, it is possible for them to have a child who does not have any S gene who does and therefore has um, a, a genotype AA and the chance for that happening is 25%. And the last possible scenario for this couple is that one of them passes the abnormal mutated gene copy to the child while the other parent passes a normal gene to the child in which case the child has the A and S and so the child itself is also a carrier. The risk of that happening is 50%. So these are the scenarios that people with AS genotype should consider, should be aware of as they enter into relationships that might end in marriage or end in them having children together. And this is that in each pregnancy, the, ch the chance of the child having sickle cell disease that is, having the HBSS is 
the chance that the child is a carrier and therefore the AS genotype is 50%. While the chance in that pregnancy of the child not being a carrier, not having sickle cell disease is also 25%. In the next set of videos, we want to answer, well, how do we know? Is it possible to find out which child has the sickle cell disease or which child while in the womb has the AS genotype or which child has the AL genotype while in the womb? Stick around. I'm going to put, I'm going to put together a video on that particular question again soon. Okay, so now that you know the possible scenarios that could happen for people with AS genotype, I'd like to ask you a question. Please tell me in the comments below. Knowing the potential effect of sickle cell disease, if you were the AS genotype and you were dating or in a romantic relationship with somebody who has the AS genotype, what would you do now that we've considered the odds or the chances for having a child with sickle cell disease in each pregnancy that you have. So guys, we've come to the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around with me up to this point. And now my promise, in the descriptions below, I'm going to put a link to the free checklist for what everyone with AS genotype needs to know before they get into a relationship with somebody else who has the AS genotype. So make sure you check that out. I think it will be very useful. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe. Please share the video and give us a like. And until I see you again, make sure you look after yourself.